artists, welcome back to Art Wandering Studios. Today we really are just going to do some basic beginner drawing lessons. So if you ask yourself the question, how do I become an artist? How do I start to learn how to draw? The answer really is, is you've already started that journey, but it was such a long time ago, like when you were a child. Um, and before you started thinking about people judging you, you already started to draw, even if it was just in stick figures. The problem with drawing is people will stop drawing after they become more conscientious of how people are judging them. So sometimes after elementary school, if um, students are not immersed in art classes in middle school, they'll often stop drawing altogether, which is why it's so important to keep arts in school, is to prevent that lag from happening. But I'm gonna start you off, and if you have a basic sketchbook, you wanna get that out today. But any paper will do, even just typing paper, and any pencil will do too. Um, when you shade, you do wanna use a wooden pencil, but whatever pencil really you prefer um, is absolutely fine. So let's just think about drawing just for a minute. Um, and basically what you wanna think about is 3D shapes. 3D shapes are shapes like, let me zoom up here. 3D shapes are really those shapes that you think about when you think about the cylinder, the cube, and the sphere. There are other 3D shapes that can become important like the pyramid and the cone. But for the sake of our basic lessons today, we're just going to be thinking about the cylinder, the cube, and the sphere. We're going to start with the basic 3D shape on each one of these, and then I'm going to have a more in-depth lesson on each one. So let's just go ahead and go ahead and draw this with me. You're going to draw the cylinder. So for the cylinder, and I'll try to straighten it out here. I usually slant my paper just because I'm left-handed, but for the cylinder, to draw a cylinder, draw a flattened oval. Draw two straight lines down. And then what kind of bottom are you gonna have? You need a curved bottom. So this line is curved and this line is curved and this line is a flattened oval. Sometimes beginning artists will draw circles, two sticks and a line like this. But you really wanna start thinking about a cylinder. Now the 2D form of a cylinder is a rectangle. So early beginning artists in most Elementary artists are going to draw in 2D, meaning they're drawing with shapes. What you want to start to move to from 2D is you want to start drawing in 3D, and in 3D, this is the form of the rectangle. And that's really what you want to start doing. For the cube, there's a lot of different ways to draw a cube. Just go ahead, though, and start by draw a square and try to keep every side equal. But when you're sketching, you're not really worried right now about making it look exact. We're really kind of just focusing on drawing it. But put a dot in the middle. Draw the same size square in the upper right hand corner. And then you're just going to connect all of your angled lines at the top and then go to the bottom. And that's it for the cube. Again, the cube's 2D shape would be a square. For the sphere, we cannot, the sphere is, a, is the version of a circle. Now this is when value becomes so important because when you draw a sphere, you do the same thing. You're going to draw a circle and you really for a sphere want to trace a circular shape. The reason is it's almost impossible to draw a perfect circle. So if you can find a template that you can trace, that's going to work out best for you. But here's the problem with this sphere. This sphere form of a circle, there isn't another way to draw it. That's when value comes in and value is the lightness and darkness of color and this sphere has to be done through shading. I'm gonna walk you through a lesson on that. So get ready, hopefully you sketched out some of these basic shapes. We're gonna go ahead and start with the cylinder 
for the beginning of our lesson. And with the cylinder, we're gonna go ahead and think about drawing a mug. So we're gonna look at a basic mug, whether it's hot chocolate or coffee, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and draw a coffee mug. So if you're thinking of a basic mug, um, you really need to think about before you draw, what shape is it? So in the past, you may have drawn a rectangle with just a hook on it. And that's fine, but now we wanna start drawing in 3D. If you look at the top bird's eye view of a mug, you know that it is circular. So a lot of times artists will start to draw that circle. Notice what happens though when I change the perspective. Keep your eye on the circle. What happens to that circle? Correct. It turns into a flattened oval. So even though we know that the top of a mug is a circle, that does not mean that's how you're going to draw it. Artists need to look at what they see, not what they know. That's one of the first steps to becoming an artist. Pay attention to visually how things change in different views, in different perspectives. So we're gonna have this in a perspective of this view here where it's a flattened oval at the top. The bottom appears curved. Yes, I know that the bottom is flat in real life, but notice how the bottom looks curved though in the perspective that I have it in. So keep this in mind. So I already kind of set down a preliminary drawing to save time, but let me walk you through it. So what you do first is you draw that flattened oval. Now if it helps you to draw a flattened oval, you can draw the crossbars first. This will also help you draw a circle. And for example, if you need a one inch circle, I could do a one inch by one inch crossbar. And then to draw my circle, I'm just gonna draw the arches until I have a nice circle. That would actually work. Um, you don't have to use measurements. You can just hand draw and sketch this flattened oval, but this might be easier for you. So. If you want to draw this the same size I am, I did three inches across, and then I put a dot at the one and a half, which is in the middle. And then for the crossbar, I actually did a one inch, a one inch line, and then of course I just put a mark at the half inch. Then I kind of did arch, 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 and then I just kind of smoothed it out in one big motion. So you draw a flattened oval first. Then you're gonna draw a straight line down on each side with the curved bottom. If you wanna copy my measurements from this point to this point, it's three inches. So I kinda of cut my line symmetrical and I did three inches. And then I drew my straight line down, straight line down, and I curved my bottom. You can hand draw this or use a ruler. Now you have your basic cylinder set up. And you can go ahead and erase your line of symmetry. This is called a symmetrical line. If an object is symmetrical, you want to think about the line of symmetry and it may help you to draw that line of symmetry first. Whether, and in this case, this mug is symmetrical vertically. Um, at least the main form is obviously not the handle. So you wanna think about that. Just like if you're drawing this bowl here, I could actually, knowing the same skills I'm teaching you on how to draw the cylinder, I could draw this bowl and you should be able to draw this bowl on your own after this lesson just by transferring your knowledge. I know that this is a circular top, but if I turn it, it turns to a flattened oval. Now I'm just going to adjust my shape. So. This would be a curved line, this would be a curved line, and I'm just gonna draw my curves in. So you should be able to alter that shape once you know the basic form. Okay, so now that I have a basic cylinder drawn here, I am ready to turn it into a mug. So let's do it. So after you draw your lines, go ahead and kind of smooth them out a little bit. If you can, just gonna kind of sketch on top of my lines. We're just keeping this sketchy here. Now let's go ahead and put on our handle. To draw a 3D handle, put a curve line here and a curve line here. And then you can draw your handle however 
you like and however you see it. You can be creative here. And you can just kind of think of it like a C to keep it nice and easy. Okay. So again, I have a curve line here, curve it here, draw your handle in however you want. And now you have what's called overlapping, erase your overlapping line. If you did it already, check it out. It's already a 3D mug. Pretty cool, huh? So once you have it sketched out, you can actually take your line and smooth out your main form here. You can use a ruler. You can use your guide. Sorry, I have to slant it. It's really hard for me to draw the angle the video is, but I'm doing my best here. And then I just kind of smoothed out and neatened up my shape. And right now you may notice that it actually looks like a cartoon version of a mug. But I don't want to keep it in the cartoon version. So how do we move from a 3D form line drawing to a real life mug? That's done through shading. So the first thing I want to do though is let's imagine this is a nice full cup of hot chocolate or coffee. What you're going to do to make it look like it has volume is take this curved line and you're just going to kind of duplicate that. And now this is your liquid. You can take the flat end of your pencil and again at this time when you shade, you definitely do not want to shade with a mechanical pencil. A lot of students love to draw with these and I don't blame them. You don't have to sharpen it. It's nice and it's a small point and it's very comfortable to sketch with and I'm fine with that. But as soon as you're ready to shade, you really need to set that aside and get just a basic wooden pencil. I can do a mini video on how to distinguish the different pencil grades, graphite drawing pencils later, but we're not quite ready for that. So let's just take take this smooth side and just kind of shade that in by using the side of your pencil. You could add marshmallows to this if you would like. I do have a lesson where I show that, but we're not going to right now. Now for that, now you're going to take a blender, a blending stump. Blending stumps come in all different shapes and sizes. I have a whole collection here as you can see. Just grab a size that's comfortable for you. If you don't have a blending stump, that's not a big deal. Just use a Q-tip. These work just great. You can use your finger, but your finger's too big for certain spaces, so grab some Q-tips. Um, but these blenders are super nice to have too. And if you have a blender or a Q-tip, go ahead and soften that pencil up. And if you haven't drawn before, this is so fun because you're going to see how smooth it is. Now take the tip of your pencil or Q-tip and really try to bring that outline in towards your mug. All right, we're already starting to get a nice 3D look to our mug. But now we're going to do the same thing we did with our sunflower. If you're following along in order of my lessons, lesson two was how to paint our sunflower. So we did this lesson. If you missed this lesson, you can go ahead and go to Art Wandering Studios Lesson 2 and go ahead and check that out. But remember when we lightened up our lines before we painted? This is an important for an artist to do. So go ahead and take any eraser. You're going to lighten up these lines. You want to still be able to see your lines, but you don't want a nice dark outline. You can also neaten up your sketch marks as you go, by the way. You don't want to see outlines because outlines keep things too coloring bookish. Like they look too fake. Things aren't outlined in real life, so don't draw them that way. Again, this is about being an artist and starting to really pay attention to how things are in real life. Just neaten this up right here. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and think about just some super basic shading. We're not going to get too carried away, but we're going to think about value. And let me just show you a minute what value is. So value in pencil, value is the lightness and or darkness of color. It really is shading. 
It's not how much your it's worth. It's just how much um, shading you have. To do that with the pencil, you can actually do what's called a value scale and just practice this on a separate sheet. But if I press harder, it's going to be darker. And I can very gradually get lighter and lighter on my pencil. And as I get lighter and lighter on, on my pencil, it's going to start to fade away. So that is value, going from dark to light. And you want to start to get really good at that. Sometimes it's really a problem when you shade messy or too fast. And let me show you, when you do this, it's really hard to blend that. You don't want gaps in between. You want to start to overlap. Another thing I found very handy is cross hatching. Cross hatching when you shade is, you know, you might want to, you know how I went vertical here? Cross hatching is when you cross over. This really helps you control not only how much color and value you have to an object, but it also helps in getting rid of those lines because you really don't want lines in your shading. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cross hatch that and you can practice this too. This is such a good exercise to do. So when I'm in the art room, we usually will spend a whole day just on this value where I really have them practice um, going dark to light, cross hatching. You can even go over it again. And if you do over again, like if I want it darker on this side, I actually am going to just keep, you just keep switching your pencil. This is a great way to shade. Now, artists are gonna vary on how they shade and what they shade, and that's great. I mean, you find your own beat, find what you like. But if you look, I can hardly tell the direction of my line here. I didn't even use a blender. We are gonna use a blender for beginning artists, but just keep in mind that eventually you wanna rely less and less on the blender and more and more on your cross hatching and your shading. But I could take my, either my Q-tip or my blender, and you want a clean blender, but if I start on the light side, you know, I'm just gonna keep real light pressure, but I can go ahead and blend my value really nice and smooth. Do you see that, how that softened it? So let's go ahead and apply that value on our mug. A cylinder is going to, if the light's shining like straight on, is gonna look darker on the sides than in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're gonna just take your regular pencil and you are going to go dark and right for, right, keep your lines as you're shading, keep your lines with the form of your piece you're shading. So this is a nice straight line. I'm going to keep it straight. Now you can go a little over or I'm just going to get it lighter in the middle. I'm going to go back over my sides because I want them even darker here. I'm just keeping a nice smooth value. I'm going to flip it over, rotate your paper so it's comfortable. I'm going to go straight over my handles. I'm not going to worry about going around my handles. And I'm just gonna go dark and I'm gonna gradually get lighter and lighter and lighter on my pencil. And I'm gonna leave the middle alone. So it's darker on the sides and it's lighter on the middle. If you wanna go back over, try cross hatching it a little bit before we add our pencil. You might even wanna just keep your lines vertical. You do wanna shade with the form of the piece. Just don't worry about it too much. I'm not worried about my messing overlap. I'll show you how we're gonna fix that in a minute. So now that you went dark to light, let's go ahead and do the back. So on the back of this, you're just gonna shade it nice and light. Just give it a nice light medium. I wanna keep my liquid in there darker. Just keep that lighter, okay? So now what you're going to do is take your Q-tip or your blender. I'm gonna use my Q-tip since most of you probably have that right now. Um, and a Q-tip is nice and clean anyway, so it works really well. I'm just gonna use the side of it. I'm gonna start on the light. I'm keeping my strokes with the form this time. Nice straight up and down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do my left, and now I'm gonna do my other side, straight up and down. Straight up and down, keep your motion smooth and long, and then keep it nice and light in the middle of your mug. Now you can go back over this and kind of smooth it out by making tiny circles here and there if you need to. 
or you can just leave it for this practice. It's up to you. But now I have some great shading. I went dark to light and then just go ahead and soften the back. Notice that um, I have a dirty Q-tip. I just am flipping it to my clean side. And we're just doing a real quick exercise here. I could actually do a video where I took a whole hour on a mug and really made it really hyper realistic, but that takes more time. And we're just keeping it nice and basic here. But keep in mind, you can take this a level ahead. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and clean up our edges. So how are you gonna do that? This is a great trick to really makes it look 3D. I want this super crisp because in real life it's super crisp. It's not a fuzzy edge. So why would I want it fuzzy now? I don't. Take another piece of paper and you are going to line it back up to where how you want it. Notice this overlap that I don't want. I'm gonna take my eraser. I'm gonna hold down your paper really firm and I'm just gonna go ahead and erase up what I don't want and check it out. Such a perfect line, I love it. What also I love is I erased my original outline. This is gonna make your drawing look so 3D. It's just so awesome. I'm gonna do the same thing on my other side. I'm gonna line it up, find your original straight vertical line and go ahead and erase that line up, ignoring your handle for right now. And voila, so beautiful. For the bottom, you're gonna need, obviously you can't do that trick with the bottom. You're just gonna need to take your eraser and try to do that as neatly as you can. You'll get better at it as you draw more. Look how pretty that is. See how I did that? Kind of erase my line up as I went and do the same thing on the back here. Nice and straight, keep it. You don't want it fuzzy on the ends. Okay, just like so that. now let's go back and pay attention a little bit. Zoom up here on our handle. So you should still be able to see your handle. If not, just redraw it in a little bit. So if you can't see your handle, just redraw it in. And the reason why you want to go through your handle is it's going to look, you can, you'll be able to tell that when you stopped, you won't be able to blend this like this con smoothly and consistently. And it's really easy. We're working in graphite, which is your pencil. So just, it erases really nice, especially on this nice paper. I don't know if you were able to pick up this pad from my materials list. This sketch pad's really nice, but if not, it's okay. All right, so now you have your mug and let's just go ahead and do a little bit of shading on our mugs here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm shading at an angle and I'm just gonna add some shading on the bottom towards my mug here. Just gonna give this some definition, making it a little bit darker here and there. And you can vary your shading a little bit, of course. And then I'm just gonna take a blender. Again, you can take your Q-tip and try to be nice and neat about this right in here and just blend it until it fades away. So you're just gonna blend it until it fades. And, and notice when I'm blending, I'm actually trying to keep my blender, when I can, it's not always possible, but when I can, I'm keeping it with the form of my piece. So while it's curved here, I'm gonna curve my shading. See how it's curved here? If I went straight right here, what would happen is my shading would flatten my piece and I don't want that. That's why it's important to um, blend in the direction that your mug is in. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of keep taking it out. And you can play with this till you like it. You can play with your highlights. And I hope you do a great job. Thanks. Okay, so once you're done with your mug, and you can stop the video, and you can do touches. Like, if you wanna add some more shading at the base, if you want to add some more shading at the handles, if you need to smooth it out, just practice that value scale, like going from lightness to darkness, and you can blend those in. And then what you can do is we're going to go ahead, and if you add what's called a horizon line, this will make your mug prevent it from looking like it's flying in outer space. So to do that and to keep it nice and straight, you want a 90 degree angle here. And to do that, you can just take a regular ruler if you don't have an architectural triangle. And because a ruler already has a 90 degree angle, I can line up this flat side with the flat side of my paper. And if I do that, that line will be perfectly straight. 
So you can go ahead and do that, skip your mug, and then I just added some shadow. I just kind of went dark and just lightened up my line. Dark, lightened up my line. And then you want to do a shadow to make something look 3D. Um, a shadow falls opposite of its light source. So if my light source is coming from the upper left, then my shadow is going to fall on the right. And shadows change depending on the time of day and where the light source is. But if you go a little bit up your mug, instead of starting your shadow here, this is going to make it look much more 3D. Just draw an angled line up. Come to the base of the cup and draw the same parallel angle. So this shadow line should be parallel to this shadow line. This one's coming up the cup a little bit. This one's right here, curved slightly. And then just curve the top. Depending on what your handle style is, just add an elongated shadow. And then a trick is, um, if you just take a tissue, these work really well. Paper towels will not work, but I can just take a tissue, and a tissue is going to really make a really nice, soft, um, smooth shadow. And you can actually use this for your mug or whenever you're shading. I will resort to a Kleenex when I'm doing skin because I have found that these blenders here will sometimes look too, um, too rough for skin. And I'm not sure how much time we'll have with this coronavirus thing and, or how much I'll be doing. But you're going, to, I might eventually do how to draw a face and I'll show you how we can switch over to that. But there's a decent shadow. And then you can just kind of go over it left to right a little bit, kind of blending it in with your table just a little bit. And then up here, I'm just going to take my Kleenex. You can use your blending tool here, though. Whatever works for you is fine. I'm just giving a little bit of something in the background. Again, you could spend a lot longer than two seconds on it. You could pause the video. You could add a table print. I mean, really, whatever you would like. And you can always go back in and neaten it up. I'm not sure why it went darker there. Probably had some oil on my hand. Which you can kind of neaten up your shadow with your eraser just like you would anything else, really. Sometimes shadows are nice and crisp. Sometimes shadows have a real fuzzy edge. It, again, it depends on the surface they're laying on. And it depends on... I'm not sure why that got so dark there. It depends on the surface that they're lying on. How reflective it is and your light source. So you can just play around with it, um, whatever you like. But basically that's all there is to basic 3D drawing. And that's it. Job well done. And all you need to do for a mug.